What's up, guys? Sherry here from No Fucks Giving Crew. Okay, so um, I was reading through some of the comments, and there was a discussion on, uh, you know, disconnecting with your twin flame. You know, can you disconnect? No, you can't. <laughs> There's absolutely no way that you can disconnect with somebody. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't even have to be your twin flame. You're always connected um, to everyone. So, uh, you know, when a bond is made, it cannot be broken. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, an impromptu reading. And I'm thinking I'd like Spirit to help me clarify what I mean by disconnect okay when I'm saying disconnect um, it's you know not cut off all contact with your masculine it, it is more of an internal thing it is you know you know not engaging in thoughts or allowing your emotions to take over you know uh, when you feel a t you know a tinge or if you have a thought about something, don't attach to it. You know, don't give that thought form is what I'm trying to say. Um, you know, that, that means cutting out any thoughts about the masculine. Um, I'm not saying go out and block anybody or, you know, send, you know, some kind of message out to them saying, that's it, I've had it with you. What I'm saying is you need to go within and detach, disconnect completely from any thoughts, feelings, or emotions, okay? Um, so that is a self-love act, and it requires um, a conscious choice. And I think that's what the choice was that was presented in the feminine's uh, like for the twin flame reading on the feminine side in the near future, there was this, you know, quantum leap in awareness. And I really think that, you know, spirit is saying that this is what we need to realize. Um, all the choices that we make in terms of our awakening, our evolution, have only to do with us. It has nothing whatsoever to do with our twin. Like, um... You know, why would you want to waste your energy on somebody else when you can be filling your mind with, you know, I enjoy reading, you know, learning about physics and, you know, free energy and stuff like that. So I, I find it pointless to worry or think about somebody else, what they're doing. Um, so, yeah, so I'm hoping that spirit will help, you know, shed some clarity on this. Um, also, we're having a full moon in Capricorn on Saturday. So, the energy is pretty heavy right now, so check yourself. Um, this is not a time to allow fear to consume you, um, you know, face your fears head on. Okay, stop. So I'm going to pull some random cards and let's just see what spirit has to say. Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to look them at them just yet. So this is Myths and Mermaids and I'm going to shuffle one more time. Um, so I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't think I'm going to assign, you know, um, position descriptions. So I'm just going to throw the cards down and see what happens. Okay, so um, Osho Zen always has some great cards. Okay, so I'm going to look at these ones. I don't know why. I'm just following my intuition. Nine of Wands. Innocence. The Burden. Nice. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Spirit. Awesome. I knew it. Can I look at the bottom? Nice. Beautiful. Oh, my God. The synchronicities. Thank you. Thank you, Spirit. 
Okay, those are the cards that I was hoping would fall out. There was one more card that I was I was looking for, but that's cool. Um, what I'm noticing here right away is how, you know, this figure is kind of pointing, I want to go this way, I want to go that way. Um, you know, it's an outside directed force. Well, as the sun card here, he's looking at a little grasshopper. So it's about, you know, seeing yourself, your consciousness in the eyes of another and, you know, just being in a moment and not being, you know, in the mind, I got to get, I got to consume. What about this? What about that? Right. And the, the answer will come with this card and this card. So I, I will be reading those to you. Um, so I just want to pull two more cards, Sad Embrace and Commitment, interesting, okay. So there is no feminine or masculine side to this whatsoever. All right, so let's begin with, um, yeah, let's begin with Commitment and then I'll read through the rest of the cards. So what I'm seeing so far here is, okay, there's a promise of us coming together, commitment, the twin flames. Um, you are always connected. That's what I'm seeing with this. It's that golden thread, uh, that golden light that connects us always, and it can never be broken. Love is eternal, okay? So um, I'll come back to that. So with the Osho, we have nine of wands, so that's exhaustion. This is being caught in the machine. Um, you know, it's mindless activity. Here we have consciousness and return to innocence, uh, a playful state, you know, enjoying life. Um, the six of swords burden is, you know, carrying... Um, caring too much about what other people think and uh, giving all of your energy to to other people um, and you know in the Rider Waite deck this also talks about going to a calmer state of mind so is this card and this too as well on some level and then the four of cups turning in beautiful thank you uh, and then the five of cups clinging to the past Okay, I love how we have thought and water card, which is emotions, okay, and fire, which is, you know, the nine um, is to the point of exhaustion. Um, so it's, you know, burning the candle at both ends kind of thing. You're just giving it your all and you're carrying on, you know, carrying too much responsibility. Okay, and then the sad embrace. Now... The, what I'm seeing here is two perspectives. You have a choice. You can choose to see your life as a sad, you know, story. Or you can see the bright side that, you know, that you guys are eternally connected and that you are loved. No matter what is going on in the outside world, okay, it is your belief that comes from within um, that determines your reality. Okay, so let's read the commitment card. Okay, true commitment is a responsibility of the heart, mind, body, and soul. This is a good time to make one. Partnerships formed at this time are harmonious and powerful. The commitment card also indicates the natural evolution of a relationship uh, from its inception to a literal or meta metaphorical marriage. At the very least, there is a promise of fulfillment in some form. However, you must be conscious of what you are committing to. Be clear about the nature of your commitment and your responsibility to it. Others are more willing to enter into partnerships at this time. Remember that your partnership with spirit and the highest version of yourself will engage the highest self in another, right? So if you are living at a high vibration, that is going to attract positive people into your life and vice versa. If you project negativity and sadness and victim mentality, 
that is what you're going to attract into your life. Okay, right, so let's read number 45. Okay, sad embrace. Loss is a part of life. Let go and allow time to heal you. You may be entering into a period where loss is a theme. Perhaps you're having to let go of a long cherished dream. If, you, if so, take heart, for the ending may have been for your highest good. A better and more powerful dream will be realized in your life if you can accept the loss. Relationships based on faulty foundations are meant to end at this time. Disappointment is a form of perception. If your expectations weren't met, a sense of loss arises along with sadness and grief. Express these emotions. Tears are like healing rain that can restore your life to a parched inner landscape. Growth is always assured. Whatever the loss, however great it is, let go and experience your feelings so that you may soon see what beauty lies ahead. So, it, you know, what I'm really feeling here is it's a perception. If you feel the loss, you will feel that pain. And it's because you were attached you had expectations you thought things were going to work out a certain way and when they didn't you were heartbroken okay that is a self-fulfilling prophecy um so like i said perception okay so let's move on to exhaustion Okay, man who lives through conscience becomes hard. A man who lives through consciousness remains soft. Why? Because a man who has some ideas about how to live naturally becomes hard. He has continuously to care, sorry, to carry his character around with him. Um, that character is like an armor, his protection, his security. His whole life is invested in that character and he always reacts to situations through the character, not directly. Okay, so when you're, you know, thinking about, well, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, you know, you know and you're thinking about all these possibilities in, in your life history, and okay, the, those are conditions, those are uh, past life, um, you know, it's a parasite that has been handed down to you from your parents and your parents' parents. Uh, and it has been ingrained into your reality um, by society, okay? So, yes, there is some out, you know, external influences, but you can choose um, how to see the situation. Okay, if you ask him a question, his answer is ready-made. That is a sign of a hard person. He is dull, stupid, mechanical. He may be a good computer, but he is not a man. You do something, and he reacts in a well-established way. His reaction is predictable. He is a robot. The real man acts spontaneously. If you ask him a question, your question gets a response, not a reaction. Not a reaction. He opens his heart to your question, exposes himself to your question, responds to it, opens his heart to the question does not close off okay innocence so this is a sun card the best major arcana to possibly get um one moment okay sorry about that all right um Zen says that if you drop knowledge, and within knowledge everything is included, your name, your identity, everything, because this has been given to you by others, if you drop all that has been given by others, you will have a totally different quality to your being, innocence. This will be a crucifixion of the persona, the personality. There will be a resurrection of your innocence. You will become a child again, reborn. So, you know, it's, there's three levels to consciousness. There's a camel that is worried about what other people think, and they react. Uh, second level is the lion. 
um, where you start to realize your power and you know you're the lion amongst the sheep so you know it's a more of a, a reactive kind of energy but it's an empowerment you're coming out of the crowd uh, then there's the child okay and that's a return to innocence it's purity uh, there's no attachment attachments there's no stories there's no you know um, agenda okay there's no want there's no need they're just there's just a state of playfulness and experiencing okay so being in the now in the moment and enjoying your life so the six of swords When we carry a load of shoulds and shouldn'ts imposed on us by others, we become like this ragged, struggling figure trying to make his way uphill. Go faster, try harder, reach the top, shouts the foolish tyrant he carries on his shoulder, while the tyrant himself is crowned with an imperious rooster. If life these days feels like a struggle from the cradle to the grave, it could be time to shrug your shoulders and see what it feels like to walk without characters on your back. You have your own mountains to conquer, your own dreams to fulfill, but will never have the energy to pursue them until you release yourself from all the expectations you've gathered from others, but now think are your own. Chances are they exist only in your own mind, but that doesn't mean they can't weigh you down. It's time to lighten up and send them on their way. So when I say disconnect, I'm talking about thoughts, emotions, don't allow them you know, to to attach themselves to you, okay? So, um, who cares what's going on in the world? Sh you should do this, you shouldn't do that. You know, it's pff, whatever. Live your own life. Do the things that make you happy. Pursue new ideas, creative ideas, you know? Like, everyone's an artist as far as I'm concerned. Pick up the paintbrush, pick up an instrument, you know, don't allow these thoughts into your, your field. So turning in, number four. Okay. The woman in this image has a faint smile on her face. In fact, she is just watching the antics of the mind, not judging, not trying to stop them, not identifying, just watching as if they were traffic on the road or ripples on the surface of a pond. And the antics of the mind are slightly amusing as it jumps up and down and twists this way and that, trying to get your attention and seduce you into the game. To develop the knack of taking a distance from the mind, it is one of the greatest blessings. It is what meditation is all about, really. Not chanting a mantra or repeating an affirmation, but just watching, as if the mind belongs to somebody else. You are ready to take the distance now and to watch the show without getting caught up in the drama. Indulge yourself in the simple freedom of turning in whatever, whenever you can. And the knack of meditation will grow and deepen in you. Bam. Bam, baby, right there. Okay, so I'll read um, Sad Embrace. Oh, no, we already did that one. Okay, so Clinging to the Past. Okay, Politics is below that as well people wearing two faces okay the figure um, sorry the figure pictured in this card is so preoccupied with clutching her box of memories that she has turned her back on the sparkling champagne plain oh god champagne glass of blessings available here and now her nostalgia for the past really makes her a blockhead and a beggar besides as we can see from her patched and ragged clothes she needn't be a beggar of course, but she is not available to taste the pleasures that offer themselves in the present. It's time to face up to the fact that the past is gone, and any effort to repeat it is a sure way to stay stuck in old blueprints that you would have already outgrown. 
if you hadn't been so busy clinging to what you have already been through. Take a deep breath, put the box down and tie it up with a pretty ribbon if you must and bid it a fond fucking farewell. Life is passing you by and you're in danger of becoming an old fossil before your time. Put it down. Okay, so these are going to be the final messages from the universe. Um, so what the fuck will assign uh, genders to this? So this is a masculine. Mermaid picking lotus blossoms and the feminine sea beasties. Here in the murky depths we dwell, trapped in darkness like a jail, obscured by she who holds a key, yet chooses not to lift the veil. Our clandestine existence can, our shadows no longer condone. Buried deep we wait, we sleep, unknowable or just unknown. A strange maiden in the tentacled headdress fixes her slightest gaze straight ahead, unaware of a bizarre creature surrounding her at the bottom of the deepest sea. Be aware of deeply buried thoughts and desires. Lately you have felt some unfamiliar stirrings from thoughts and desires buried deep below the surface. These elements um, of self may be things you have forgotten and they may be things you have intentionally ignored or unconsciously repressed. However, they are still there. It is time to acknowledge their existence. These ideas and emotions, perhaps even fear, may be difficult to retrieve or recall, but do not worry, nothing is impossible, and the more you concentrate on becoming self-aware, the better you will become at understanding these hidden pieces of your personality. Okay, so that's this, and this, and this, and this. Those are all hidden pieces of our personality, but they're not a part of us. They are things that have been passed down to us. They're things that have attached to us. Okay, so here, now, you know, um, you know, it isn't I, it is the consciousness behind I. It is the observer, okay? There is no age, there's no gender, there's no, you know, um, 3D body when it comes to your soul. So anything that is in the 3D world is just an attachment, is just an illusion. Mermaid picking lotus blossoms. Dreams of purest perfection, power to exist in light. Will I live in the world I imagine or dwell in my own endless night? Or is sanctuary waiting, destined to be my abode? Will I catch the wild fever of wanderlust and journey down curious roads? No matter which path I will walk down, whatever I find I must pay. However much pain is required of me, my gods know that I'm on my way. A lovely golden-haired mermaid sits upright in a pond covered with lily pads. She thoughtfully seeks out and selects a lotus blossom. A contemplative look is upon her face. She is on a quest of faith, a quest of spiritual na uh, nature. You are seeking spiritual perfection. You are surrounded by options, mental, material, emotional, and spiritual. Now is the time to focus your energies and select a path to search for spiritual perfection. Take your time and find the direction that is appropriate for you. Experiment with a new method of communing with nature or your higher power through yoga, meditation, or religion, religious study. Find a group who is seeking just as you are and who shares your ambitions. This is a time to move forward with an open mind and curious heart. Do not prejudge the paths others are on. Attend a service with a fam familiar fam family member or a friend of a different faith. Read spiritual texts that are unfamiliar to you and take the time to experiment and walk into new territories. You never know where your new path may lead you. So what I'm feeling with that is just, you know, an expansion. Open up, you know, masculine and feminine. You know, don't 
close up, allow these demon, you know, parasite energies to consume you, okay? Expand yourself, expand your consciousness. Um, we are all one. All right, guys, so I hope this helped. I love you. Peace.